Hi everybody, welcome to the Home Birthified 38 week update. It's a little late this week. Um, basically I kept it a little later because I had a few things coming up later in the week I wanted to include in this video. So it didn't seem to make much sense to make two videos when I could make just the one. So um, my 38 week update appointment with my midwife was on Tuesday and for the first time my blood pressure was really good there. It was like 122 on 80, which is probably the lowest it's been in office for a very long time. Um, I was actually at a function this morning where one of my midwives was present and I had to have my blood pressure taken four times and each time my blood pressure was good, like 120 to 128 on um, about 65 to 80. So. I'm hoping that is enough reassurance for them that um, everything's going well. I'm not fudging my numbers at home and, you know, for the most part my blood pressure actually is good, it's just them. So that was kind of uh, a nice little benefit of seeing them this morning. Um, just so I feel more at ease about what's going on. Um, I'm just going to be looking at my notes. Um, I had the baby's heart rate listened to and it was in the 150s with accelerations into the 160s. That was pretty consistent. This morning it was anywhere from 130 to 140 with excels to the 150s. So who knows if you believe in fetal heart rate, um, gender prediction, you know, really this baby could be anything. And uh, I don't personally as a doula put much stock into fetal heart rate unless the person is in labor. And then I give it a little more, um, a little more validation maybe is, uh, that's not really the word I'm looking for. But either way, it's a little more valid. Um, baby is still really low. Um, by way of symptoms, I'm having lots of pubic pain in the front. Um, I had that a lot with my first baby, not so much with my second. Uh, after I have my cranial sacral sessions, it feels much better once it's adjusted, but then throughout the week, within a few days, it feels back to where it was. And uh, baby's head is really low, so it makes sense that I'm feeling that pain and discomfort. Um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely at the point where I think out of the first, like for the first time in all three of my pregnancies, I'm really ready for this baby to come anytime because it's, you know, I'm just uncomfortable and mm, yeah, it's a little strange. I've, you know, with my first, by the time I got to 41 weeks, I was kind of ready for that baby to be born. But with my second, I didn't even anticipate having this baby before 41 weeks. And uh, yeah, it's just to think it's really funny for this pregnancy. I'm a little more eager, even though babies are much easier to look after on the inside. <laughs> um, Baby, for the most part, is lying on my left side, so um, left occiput anterior, feeling all my kicks at the upper part of my belly on my right side, and uh, hiccups are still really down low, so I'm pretty comfortable that baby is where it's supposed to be. Hopefully it'll stay there. I'm a lot more anxious in the last couple weeks. I've been clenching. I don't grind my teeth, but I clench them, and uh, that has increased in the last week and a half to the point where I'm waking up with headaches. So I actually bought a mouth guard um, just at our local drugstore and fitted that. And in the three nights that I've been using it, I've woken up without the headaches. I do feel less anxious and less tense. And my cranial sacral therapist really encouraged me to go and get a, night, a mouth guard because she's like, you know, it pretty much undoes all the work that we're doing. And uh, you might as well try and treat it at home while you can. So yeah, it's it was a good purchase. <laughs> Runs about uh, $20, $30 here where I live. So, you know, uh, if I find that I need it, I'll go get a proper one done up. But for now, it, it works. Um, I'm not sleeping that well. Uh, regardless, I finally started <laughs> having to get up at night to pee. And I know at 38 weeks, I am really lucky that I'm just starting to do that. Um, I, but it does bring me some anxiety, which sounds silly to some people. Um, one of my big issues with my second son's birth was I woke up at 4.30, I had to go pee, I stood up and I started gushing. 
and I thought I had peed my pants. No, <laughs> most logical people would have thought, oh, my water broke. No, not me. I thought I peed my pants. But um, yeah, so I actually was bleeding and I have a lot of anxiety at, when I get up at night to pee that I'm gonna stand up and experience the same sensation because that was probably the worst thing about his birth while I was at home was that sen that feeling of the gush. So I worry every time I stand up in the middle of the night that I'm gonna have that again. So yeah, it's really, it sounds like something silly to be scared about, but it really is bothering me. And so uh, with that and, uh, and feeling more anxious in general, like my heart rate has been pretty high. Like I think my resting heart rate right now, if I'm lucky, is in the 80s. Um, but it gets up into the 100s really easy. And so that's not really good for me or the baby. So I'm hoping that calms down a little bit. Um, hmm. Oh, so at my midwife's appointment, they were, they offered me a stretch and sweep. They have four clients left in December to deliver. They've had a couple of their moms go early and they have one client left for November and then I'm next in line. So they did say that if that next client has her baby soon, they'll offer me a stretch and sweep at uh, my 39 week appointment. Now, I think I've mentioned in previous videos, I haven't had a proper stretch and sweep for my two previous pregnancies. With my first at 41 weeks, my midwife tried, but it was too hard to get, like my cervix was too posterior and back and still too high and firm that she couldn't even get in to do a stretch and sweep. Um, so really I didn't have one. Um, and with my second, I didn't need one. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I've never actually had a stretch and sweep. So I don't really know if I want to be messing around and stirring things up just because it's offered. And, uh, you know, if I was having lots of contractions, like I'm having less Braxton Hicks contractions now than I was having 10 weeks ago. And I'm not having any sort of crampy period, like cramps or any contractions that I would, you know, would make me stop and, and pay attention. So I don't see why I would try and do something like that. So yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think where they're probably coming from is uh, because of my uh, blood pressure in their office, they probably would like things going a little sooner so it doesn't get even higher. And I do have some swelling in my hands, like if you can't really tell in this light, but when I put my hands back, my knuckles blanch, and I guess that's a classic sign that there is some swelling in my hands. And, uh, you know, I noticed that at the end of the day that my feet are a little bit more swollen, but nothing that pits, nothing that stays. If I press it on the skin, it doesn't dent, but it just, you know, you can see where my socks have been. So yeah, I think that's probably why they're offering it. I don't think I'm going to take them up on it. Um, yeah, and other, like, getting ready for baby news, I finally made a contact list for my husband for people to call. I have all these numbers in my cell phone. I don't really anticipate having to use them, but I do have a list now of people that we must call should I have this baby, um, including our doula's number, because I realized at my last little visit with my doula that we didn't have her number anywhere where we could find it. I didn't even have it programmed into my phone, so, because most of our... I mean, we visited, but most of our communication have been uh, through email. So, yeah. So that's done now. That's one more thing off the list. And then finally, I um, two of my good friends had uh, Mother's Blessing for me, which in our circle we call Blizzard Ways. Um, I don't know if everybody watching this has Dairy Queens where they live, but it's like an ice cream shop. And they make these things called Blizzard where they look put candy pieces or cookie pieces into a soft serve ice cream. And um, yeah, so they're just really tasty treats. And so instead of doing a blessing way, which, um, you know, can be a little more on the touchy feely side of things, we do blizzard ways. So we keep the topic light, but at the same time, we do do something to honor the mother and to try and encourage her for the birth. So with my last friend, we did a big poster for her with um, 
it was like a scrapbooking thing where we just did lots of uh, fun little phrases um, to encourage her during the birth and put up images that we knew would be um, inspiring to her or at least make her laugh during labor and that worked really well but for me they wanted to do something different so they actually made uh, prayer flags or like just a banner so I don't think you're going to be able to read a lot of this it's kind of hard on the dark one so that one says we are all water babies so yeah we just picked different birth affirmations that I liked and put them up and then there's lovely images this image is from a necklace that I have that um, has a storm cloud behind the house and the idea is that you know that house your home is the shelter from the storm I'm sorry about the sun's reflection there and this is one that I wrote my body knows what to do and this is my girlfriend who drew all these she can tell me what they're like oh this is a Mayan birth goddess and this is but yeah I didn't pay attention <laughs> hugs not drugs and this is just another image and this one I found on a birth affirmation site so my baby knows my heartbeat my breathing my voice and my love we are connected and so the idea is that I'm going to post this up pin it up in my room somewhere my body is wise and purposeful. And this is the water birth lady, because I'm hoping to have a water birth this time. I trust my intuition. And there's another lovely goddess of birth. And you're gonna get huge. This is the Ina May Gaskin um, mantra that we I actually said this all through my last birth to myself, not out loud. And uh, it got me through that labor where I was not allowed out of bed. So that and horse lips, but uh, so my last video cut out, so I'm just going to finish showing it. It's hard to see that one. Trust birth. This I actually did on our pumpkin for Halloween, this little carving. So the girls thought that would be fun to put on there. And then I can handle whatever comes up. And then we thought because we have a sick sense of humor or out is written in there in little words. And then finally a little goddess of birth. So the idea is that um, I'll post the, I'll pin it up in my room um, for the birth, for inspiration, and just to remind me that, you know, people love me and are rooting for me. And then should I have to go to the hospital, um, I'm guessing I'll maybe try and get it. Depends on what's going on. But uh, yeah, that's it. So I'll be back in a few days with my 39-week update, and I'll see you soon.